I turn on pop stations and it'd be the same sad, slow songs back to back to back. Sad, sick, and sorry. And I'm like, oh my gosh, like, can we dance? Can we move? Hey guys, it's your girl Cameron and I'm back at it again with another video. And today we are going to be talking about the shift from fun bubblegum pop to moody and angsty pop. If you look at some of our quote pop newcomers, the way that they've gotten their start, the trend of their hits, the aesthetic that they put upon themselves, which is so important for a pop star, is a little bit different than what we have seen in previous decades in the genre. And a Twitter user asked, where is the bubblegum pop? Why are pop bitches so depressed? Increasingly, music listeners, particularly pop fans, have noticed that in the genre, it does seem like the, the music is slower, moodier, and it's throwing people for a loop. We're long gone are the days of Katy Perry, California Girls, Hit Me Baby One More Time, Britney Spears, Escapade, Janet Jackson, Born This Way by Lady Gaga. And they don't make music like this, don't worry. So I wanna talk about the trajectory, why the sound changed, why consumers may or may not be connecting with it. And lastly, are pop girls listening, right? Because there has been this increasing critique. Hit that subscribe button down below if you'd like to see more content like this and also turn on your post notifications so you don't miss out on an upload. Without further ado, let's just get straight into the video. Let's go. What are people wanting? Pop fans have been recently reminiscing on a time where pop music was more a beat, where pop often followed the many sub-genres that present a liveliness from bubblegum pop to hyper pop to the EDM pop era of the mid 2010s. This overarching change in not only the pop sound, but the pop aesthetic, especially when we're looking at, quote, newcomers. It's darker, it's moodier, it's more emotional, and slower in a general sense. So why has this conversation particularly increased now? Times are tough, things are hard, and we crave escapism. And what are a couple of ways that we escape? Movies, TV, and music in this specific case. When we look at as a consumer, what people are wanting, the relatability trend found itself in every aspect of media from social media to music, movies, to what we expect out of our celebrities because of um, the strife and the realness of this time. A lot of people are like rescinding that offer. Like, you know what? I don't need to hear about all of your problems going on in your life. I don't want to listen to no sad ass album. And remember when Beyonce dropped Renaissance, the reason why she dropped such an upbeat, feel good album at the time was because of what was going on in the world. COVID, racial relations were extremely high as they always are, but very heightened. And she said that she wanted to give us something that presented hope, that made us feel good, that made us get up and dance in a time where you might not feel like it. And so when we're craving a musical escape, right, especially I would say in the last four to five years, it seems like the music is starting to shift, is getting a little bit darker. Some people are not trying to hear that, especially not in pop music. Let's face it, the general perception of pop music, the music you let your hair down to, a tad bit unserious and fun. And historically speaking, pop music has been identified as having these said characteristics. According to HPH, pop music usually consists of catchy melodies, repetitive structures, and often upbeat rhythms. Pop is a very fluid genre. This is not to get confused with pop being the shortened term for popular music. I'm defining the sound theme, the sonics that we associate with the actual pop genre, not just like this song is popular. I just wanted to make that clear. So when we look back at the playfulness, almost unseriousness of pop, we can look at an era where this essence truly peaked, the 2000s and the early 2010s. And stars like Katy Perry adorned cupcake bras, bright wigs, fantasy-like themes, and colorful costumes with hits like I Kissed a Girl, E.T., California Girls, Firework. Her discography is pure fun, like it's pop perfection 
at its finest and she gives just enough and knew what worked well. And that's what made Katie so successful. It's not like she was the pinnacle of musical excellence from an objective standpoint, but I feel like this era shaped pop and it's really going to go down in history as a highlight point of what defined the genre. Other artists from this particular period, like Lady Gaga, for example, who early in her career didn't reveal all of her cards, but made herself a pop main through upbeat, theatrical, quirky, kind of outlandish ideas and imploring them in her work. And it was really fun for pop because she also didn't take herself too, too seriously, but she still had artistic integrity. So when we think about songs like Just Dance, Poker Face, Bad Romance, Alejandro, and Born This Way, it was fun. It was fun, it was a fun time. Taking it a little bit back, Britney and Christina with pop tracks like Hit Me Baby One More Time, with Oops I Did It Again, Genie in a Bottle, Come On Over, and pop stars Beyonce, Rihanna, Pink, Jojo, Kesha, Sierra, Nicki Minaj with songs like Starships and Super Bass. Pop music on a mainstream, I'm saying on a mainstream level, was focused on, I would say a good time, good vibes, good energy. That's not to say that none of these artists had ballads like they did and they had slow jam halo by beyonce or sometimes by britney spears hurt by christina aguilera too little too late by jojo there's always been room in pop for a ballad a slower moment and a lot of those were radio hits but we have to remember though things change things shift it's so easy to say well things weren't this way during this time, we had artists that were considered to be contrary or beginning to carve a new lane in the pop space. Artists like Kelly Clarkson, artists like Adele, Avril Lavigne, Vanessa Carlton, Leona Lewis, Ashley Simpson. A boatload of their releases and their identity as artists were quite introspective, slightly slower, and maybe a little bit moodier than other mainstream artists and they had this niche. A different flavor to pop that a lot of us love and do appreciate till this day. So there's one very specific person that I want to talk about, the case of Avril Lavigne. How important she was in shifting the pop landscape for people like her to actually get some mainstream play and be considered a pop girl. She caught attention through her moody pop punk aesthetic and her early hits, arguably not even considered pop, sonically, but began being placed in that space. The 2002 album Let Go was her debut to the main stage and served as something noticeably different than what was being pushed in mainstream pop at the time. It was bare, simplistic, usually with a good guitar and drums, maybe a piano, and on the slower side, and quote, relatable, right? Avril was relatable for the teens who felt like I didn't fit in anywhere else. My fans are like, oh my God, I love you because like you just dress normal and they dress the way you want to dress, act what you want, act the way that you want to act, you know, write all your songs, you're so real, blah, blah, blah. And then with her 2007 album, The Best Damn Thing, she rebranded more as a pop punk artist. If you actually see Avril talking about her early music, she was very like to the contrary. She wanted to keep her music very stripped, authentic, raw and people did love her for that but around this 2007 era things shifted a bit you have hits like girlfriend for example that it's still staying true to that pop punk aesthetic but you have to notice that that rebrand was something serious like there was a difference between that avril and debut avril and as avril did conform to the trends of the industry to survive or some people believe that she actually has a doppelganger is it strange that people think you're dead? Like, what the fuck? I don't even know why, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, it is weird. Um, Conspiracy theory. Um, her initial era did not wipe away from our memories or fall on deaf ears. She made amazing introspective music that connected to an array of fans that maybe couldn't connect to Britney's girly image or Christina's seductive image. Quite frankly, Avril Lavigne was literally referred to as the pop punk alternative to Britney and Christina. And so labels saw this as an opportunity to find artists to stand out amongst the blonde holy trinity of Jessica Simpson, Britney Spears, and Christina Aguilera. Some saw Avril as a counter, an authentic and real version in comparison to the other industry machines. So when you have someone like Avril come on the scene, this pop star can be a bit uncut, people can connect, and 
people will enjoy it. Especially a lot of teenage girls, you know, we tend to be pretty moody. And I feel like that wasn't something that was always thought, especially in female artists, as thought to be valuable in pop historically. But artists like her, I think, started to change the tide and have served as an inspiration to a lot of these artists we're going to talk about um, present day. Getting more into the social aspect of this because social and art connect. With rise in relatability culture in the social media era, 2009 I would say to current day, a lot of newer artists did lean into pouring their hearts out on paper through the guise of pop. And they would go on to gain a lot of fame and respect for it. You think of people like Taylor Swift, Lana Del Rey, Billie Eilish, Olivia Rodrigo. Again, that's not to say that none of these artists haven't created upbeat music, but the fabric of their music, the heartbeat of their music, seems more stripped, a little less showy, and leans more into their feelings and emotions. For example, Lana Del Rey is an artist who has thrived off of her old American, soft-spoken, moody image and lyricism. With songs like Young and Beautiful, Summertime Sadness, which I believe is her highest charting solo song, Born to Die, This Is What Makes Us Girls, West Coast, turn those songs on and you're not hearing your typical pop artist. I know I went through a phase where I was very into Lana Del Rey, particularly as a teen. I like the moody, the angstiness of her music. And then when we shift to present day, artists like Billie Eilish, who gained major attention in 2015 with her song Ocean Eyes, immediately, Billie being kind of branded as this pop artist. When you look at a lot of Billie's hits with songs like Everything I Wanted, Bad Guy, What Was I Made For, Lovely, Bury a Friend, they're darker songs, they're slower songs. They're not like a song that I'm gonna be in the club getting down to. I'm not busting a one too. And move on to Olivia Rodrigo. I think she's super important for the new era, right? Landing a chart topping debut hit with Driver's License in 2021. And also having charting songs like Deja Vu and Vampire, for example, that are slower, reflective and more emotional songs than a traditional pop record. I don't want to say it, it follows an Avril-esque. It kind of does, but I think she really connects with her audience and she's very raw, real, emotional, and people really like her for that. She's been an extremely successful artist and it's working. Artists like Madison Beer or let's say a Tate McRae are somewhat in between but are more moody leaning, right? Like you hear one of their songs and you're like, bitch, I want to go in a corner and cry. Or I just want to chill. You see what I'm saying? Are the girls trying to give? Because a lot of this just sounds like things have changed, things have changed. Some sort of complaint. As a counter to the previous tweet that I mentioned earlier in the video about what happened to Bubblegum Pop. Some pop fans are countering that and saying, now wait a minute. The girls have been trying to give y'all this and, and, and give you upbeat and fun. And some of y'all have not been receptive or failed to stream. So pop stars often get touted as dense, musically challenged, and basic nowadays. I would say outside of a few artists like Dua Lipa, Doja Cat, and let's say Ariana Grande, for example, who were giving fun in the angsty era. Like some people acted like they didn't want to hear it or felt like they were musically inferior because they were singing about their ponytail or singing about let's go to the disco. You know what I mean? Like some people were just like, this is trash. The consumers aren't maybe responding in certain ways to a certain kind of music. You have artists like Tate McRae who started off very moody, making videos in her bedroom, filming herself writing songs, very reflective even at a young age. She was following the model of her moody pop predecessors and it worked for her, but it became a bit boring. I think when you had people like Billie Eilish and Olivia Rodrigo out and a Madison Beer, I think she kind of started to realize like, you know, the girls are giving slow. The girls are giving, they're already feeding the emotions. I need a rebrand. And she did. She rebranded in a mainstream way. With I do think that DNA still being there, someone being quite happy about Tate's rebrand said that she, quote, dropped the sad girl act and rebranded herself as a hot pop star with songs like Greedy and X's gaining major traction. I think she did gain a number one with Greedy specifically, but we can see some examples of pop girls trying to switch the narrative and bring back fun pop, bubblegum pop, not always in your feelings pop. And let's talk about it. Let's go through a list. Espresso, Sabrina Carpenter, 
Hello? Is anybody home? Honestly, Sabrina Carpenter's most of her hits. Feather, nonsense. She's trying. She's really trying to bring back this, this light cleverness to pop. And I think people are becoming more receptive of it. But I also see people being like, what the hell is this? But then y'all be the same people like, what happened to Katy Perry, California Girls? In recent releases, like Yes And by Ariana Grande, The Boy Is Mine. As much as I don't love this song, I love it by Camila Cabello. Anything Tanache does, listen to Nasty Bouncing X Pasadena. Boy Bye by Chloe Bailey. A lot of people did not like that shit. I didn't love it, but I did appreciate I think she shines more in pop. So I did appreciate her trying to lighten the mood. Pink Panthers. Love Pink Panthers. A lot of her music, she does have the sad girl act. But if you listen to songs like Nice to Meet You, you listen to songs like Blue, you listen to songs like Picture in My Mind, The Boy's a Liar, it's bops. It's bops on bops on bops. A lot of people were saying Chapel Roan. I've started to get into her a little bit, but she's also bringing a fun, liveliness, theatrical um, nature to pop music again. Normani with tracks like Motivation. I know some people thought that song was god awful and some people loved it. We're all entitled to our opinions. But to say that like some artists are not trying to give us that bubblegum, upbeat, hyper pop, etc. is not, it's a little disingenuous, but I do also think we're shifting more towards that direction. Dua Lipa, Dua Lipa, and I know I've judged her too, but even during the angsty era, Dua Lipa said, I'm going to come with my average voice, my poor performance skills, but I'm going to give you a bop. And my girl developed, she trained, she did what she needed to do, and she held us through that drought. Like a duo song comes on and you're dancing, you're moving. And I don't know if you guys know you're subconsciously doing it. Do you tend to undervalue upbeat, fun music? It's kind of like when people think the epitome of cinema is like a slow, a sad, an emotional, dreary movie. It has to be so deep. Sure. But you can also have a comedy that is the pinnacle of, of movie excellence, of cinema excellence. You could have it in a rom-com and it can genuinely be one of the best movies you've ever seen or one of the best movies ever made, right? Like slow doesn't equate to artistic. Slow doesn't equate to better. But in conclusion, I'm a proponent for fun pop, bubblegum pop, girly pop to make a comeback. I'm, I'm here for it. I'm, I'm a dancer, guys. So I like to make, like, I like to move, right? So sometimes I will say I turn on pop stations and it'd be the same sad, slow songs back to back to back, sad, sick, and sorry. And I'm like, oh my gosh, like, can we dance? Can we move? But I will say I don't hate moody pop either because there is a space for it. It's it's fine to have these artists who are catering to our emotions in a genre like pop where you don't see that. Yeah, like R&B tends to be more of a, a slower emotional genre, right? Country, more of a storytelling genre. Hip hop, you got more of a flexing genre, but then you also have people kind of talking more about their life experiences in a very raw state. Pop tend to be kind of surface fun again the song structure the melody etc so it is a bit of a shift but it's not a bad thing it's not the music does exist out there and i do think that there's artists trying to give it so if you can comment down below some of those artists or songs that you like if we are to transition back to this lighter and airier um sound and pop music I don't want it to also feel inauthentic either or artists to just do it because of nostalgia. I want new takes, new interpretations, and a sense of their own individual artistic identity. I mean, we've been seeing, for instance, house music intertwined with pop as of recent and 70s disco vibes being intertwined with pop. I think there's hope for the future. I think the tides are shifting a bit and it's becoming more balanced. Like, comment down below, and hit that subscribe button if you'd like to see more videos like this, guys. We are on the road to 50K. I appreciate each and every one of you guys for watching this, unless if you're mean, and I will see you guys in my next one. Bye.